I'm Alex, the exec producer of all our productions and head of content of BFBS Creative. I'm usually found at my desk or in meetings, but when I was asked to head to Naples to do pretty much more of the same, I thought, why not take a crew with me? So we could show you what life is like at one of NATO's most important headquarters. That's Mount Vesuvius and this is Naples. It's the gateway to the Amalfi Coast, but it's also the home of NATO's most southerly command. NATO has three permanent Joint Force Commands. There's Brunson in the Netherlands, Norfolk in the US, and right here in Naples. Now it's been pretty mad here in Naples because their operational focus is North Africa, the Middle East, and the Balkans. I've spent time with NATO before in one of those Balkan countries. I embedded with their comms team in 2021 as Chief of Production on exercise in Romania. It really was an experience for me working alongside so many different nations for the first time. Since we've arrived here, people have been telling me that this isn't a sunshine tour. So I want to find out what does actually happen here operationally. We've heard a lot in recent weeks about NATO nations working together. You've seen it in our videos from Poland, Estonia, Iceland and North Macedonia. But here, it's not just when on exercises. Day in, day out, nations work alongside each other. NATO was founded in 1949 as a response to the events of World War II. Its aim? Bring together nations that may have previously been enemies. Since Russia's invasion of Crimea, we've seen how important that alliance can be. But what does it mean to the people that work here? It is a different culture. I mean, it's a different multinational environment. It's frankly just a bit more of an adventure. It's really satisfying to contribute. Many of, uh, many of our service people Everybody wants to contribute. You join the military to contribute. It's absolutely superb to know that you can still make a difference. Pretty much from word go. For me, it's been a cascade of one exercise into the next training opportunity, only to deliver then on operations or in an operations room. Normally, at my rank, I wouldn't be as frontline. It's incredible to be in, in rooms where decisions are properly being made. You see the heads of the world coming together. This is a strategic environment that, we, that, that we're in here. Uh, and for those people who think it's a small headquarters in the south, couldn't be further from the truth. This headquarters leads NATO's activities in, in the entirety of NATO's southern region. We are delivering a strategic effect, increasingly so. At my rank, I wouldn't be involved intimately in, in what's going on. It's a position where you need to be very resilient. If you're looking to be in the heart of things and to actually show your potential, then it's definitely the, the draft for you. It was a little bit strange um, initially watching things on the news and then realising that when you come in Monday morning, that's what you're going to be dealing with. The drawdown in Afghanistan kicked off an extremely busy period for JFC Naples. When Afghan civilians who had worked for NATO needed help, it was this command centre that answered the call. Our first flight arrived, I think it was probably on the Saturday, uh, that first Saturday, uh, and to see NATO affiliate Afghans come off that flight with just, you know, what they were wearing on the backs and a bag with all the goods in there, it kind of really drove home the importance of our mission. And just to see the smiles on the faces, they seen us in our uniforms, they started to smile, they seen the badges on our arm. That for the whole team really, really hit home. Discussions at the time was, what can we in NATO do to help the evacuation that was going on at the time? We were trying to get a camp set up for a few hundred Afghan nationals within Kosovo. Day two, when we were there, we were trying to get the camp ready to accept the first plane load of people that we were able to get set up very, very quickly. The pressure of the importance of what was going on was very much forefront in everyone's mind. A real strong drive and a sense of urgency from day one. Operation Allied Solace uh, came about with the collapse of Afghanistan and nobody foresaw the requirement for us to set up a refugee camp and there's very little experience within the military. The tempo was very difficult. In the day we were trying to bring barrack blocks online, accommodation blocks online, we were trying to look after the Afghans who were already there, making sure they were fed, clothed, medical needs were met, and then we'd have another flight at night. 
So initially, for the first two weeks, it was all hands to the deck. We were trying to build the village as more Afghans were arriving. You've been able to provide them a safe, secure environment to live in, where they've been happy, made new friendships, made new bonds. And then you're able to see them get on a bus to take them to the airport to set up a new life in their new country. So how can you not feel pride in that? We are a big organisation, 30 nations, you know, and quite a lot of representation with the different countries there. So anything we try to do is, is prolonged. To see that speed, to see us react so quickly, from the day one to, to getting into theatre, to getting set up, to getting families receded and welcomed, just so impressive. And we were asking for further requirements. It was almost instantaneous. That whole thing, that whole dynamic, the way we worked as a team, a collaborative team, which is great. Absolutely great to wear that NATO badge on my arm. Just as that team in Kosovo was winding down, a major situation on NATO's eastern flank was ramping up. And once again, JFC Naples got the call. We started our planning before Christmas and then over Christmas. We thought that something might happen in Ukraine. We had a lot of intelligence feeds and there's lots of stuff on open source. We thought that a certain amount of plans might be activated, but in fact, all of them were activated at the same time. Initially, I worked out what kind of thing the Russians would do, what would be their course of action. Looking at Russian mistakes, Russian miscalculations, and then how we would counter it. We were looking at the size of Russian forces and we were discussing the capabilities. And part of my job would be then to go and find from open source and from classified source and try and amalgamate the stuff together and try and make predictions of what the Russians might do next, their most dangerous course of action, their likely courses of action. The day-to-day -day stuff that we were doing, we were seeing becoming evident on the battlefield. We watched the build-up of uh, Russian forces, it meant that we had to use all of the stuff that we'd been looking at to provide reports and assessments, to brief everybody and raise the situational awareness so that decisions could be made. When you're in the military, you always plan for things and you do a little bit of execute. It's a strange feeling where you're doing those plans and those plans, if they were to then play out on the world stage, you've really made a difference. JFC Naples is a NATO command centre. It's effectively a bunch of offices in shiny buildings. But speaking to the people this week has been amazing. Hearing the stories of their operational focus is something that has been really interesting. It's been a busy few months for militaries around the world. It's been a really busy few months for the people at JFC Naples because they have been at the forefront of everything. And I really think that's something that people both in and out of the military don't quite know.